Hi guys, I'm Lakitas and welcome to Dicey Dungeons. Uh, it's a bit of a weird game. It's kind of a roguelike dungeon crawler adventure game. Uh, it's in early development still at the moment. Well, I say early, but it's actually getting on fairly close to approaching, apparently, or like a Steam early access release. Uh, but if you do want to check it out for yourself, I will pop a link in the descriptions to uh, the main website and you can buy the game early there. Um, it's pretty cheap and even though you don't buy it on Steam at the moment, uh, if you buy it through the website apparently you get a Steam key when the game goes into Steam launch. So yeah, all very good. So without further ado we'll just dive in and I'll show you what it's all about. Uh, the reason it's called uh, Dicey Dungeons, as you might guess here, it's, it's, all, it's essentially it's a dice rolling sort of strategy game. Um, so yeah, you have a bunch of classes to choose from. You've got the Warrior, or the Rogue, and the characters are all dice themed as well. Uh, you've got the Robot, the Inventor, the Witch, and the Jester. And they all have different mechanics and different playstyles. But we're going to start off, we'll just do a Warrior run through of the base difficulty level. Just the Warrior's Welcome, standard rules, that's the most Bog forward, bog, uh, bog standard, straightforward adventure, and we'll have a go of it and see how we get on. And you'll get an idea for how the game works. Uh, yeah, the whole theme of the game is around some weird uh, game show adventure thing where you're transformed into a giant dice. Pretty much as she says, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the game is done through a series of levels here. Uh, there's six floors, you level up as you go with experience, uh, chests have items in, you can't go through enemies so you have to stop and fight them. But other than that you just move around, fight stuff, gain XP. So we'll start, we'll fight this wolf puppy over here. I love the art style of this game, it's just silly and the soundtrack is this glorious 8-bit style, you know, old school. So yeah. The way the game works, uh, you roll a number of dice on the bottom there automatically each turn. And then you have a number of equipment slots where you can pop dice into, depending on what you roll. So for example, uh, my sword on the left here, I can pop any die into that slot there and it will do that much damage. Alternately, I can use combat roll here up to three times per turn, pop a dice in and it will reroll a dice. So, what we'll do is we'll pop the two into combat roll, rolls another two, we've got two more uses though. So now that's come back with a 6, if I drop that in the sword, it does 6 damage. Now I could reuse another reroll and reroll this dice again, but I've not nothing left to use it on, so I might as well just end my turn anyway. Just twice there. And you also have kind of like a limit break bar, well it is a limit break bar, it works exactly like limit breaks in the old Final Fantasy games. Uh, as you move along there. You level up, and uh, when it hits full, you can use its ability to double your next action. So, we will reroll this dice. We've only got six hit points left, so if we can roll a six, we could instantly kill him. Now, yeah, why not? We'll use Fury. Double the next action, which means we'll hit him for five twice. So, we win the fight. Our next speech means the next fight, I'll level up. You don't heal between fights, but you do heal when you level, so... We'll go loot this chest. And we've got a battle axe. Uh, now it does double the damage of whatever dice you put into it, but you can only put a maximum of a 4 in there. But it does mean you can do a maximum of 8 damage. So, and here we've got equipment. You've, this is, you've got these 6 slots here to put equipment in. Some equipment is single slots, some of it's doubles. Some of really big ones will take up 4, I think, but uh, they're a rarity. So yeah, we'll go and fight this hothead now. So we're not worried about how much damage we take in this fight, because at the end of the fight we'll level, and then we'll go back to full health anyway. So, at the moment we've got a 5 and a 3, so... We could do a fair bit of damage to him as it is, but ideally we want a 6 and a 4. So let's re-roll the 3 first. We've got our 4. Now, we could just take that, or we could try and... Eight, six. Yeah, if we get lucky and get a six, we can one-shot him. So, screw it, why not? Well, okay. 
we do. So we do six damage that one, and then eight damage that. And down he goes. Got an extra dice. So then we get up once more. And you can see the floors get a bit bigger and there's a bit more enemies in there. So there's also carts and apples. Apples straight up heal you for X amount of health. And carts are items, but you have to pay for them. Now, uh, these are all level two, so there's no great rush. But I think I'd rather go to the right first, because then I can take these two out, then have a heal. Whereas, if I go the other way, I've got to take out all three before I can have a heal. Assuming I don't level in the meantime, which I might do anyway, actually, because, yeah, I think they're both... Yeah, no, actually, any two of these will heal me. So we'll go this way and fight the alchemist first. You get... Uh, XP equal to the level of things you fight. So, well, that's the four that we wanted already, so that's perfect. And good for the better. That's the maximum we can do in one turn. The alchemist has these count things which you put in numbers and they reduce the count. And when they reach zero, they do their damage. So. Try for six. Um, I think we're going to use Fury to take her out instantly. Your level uh, limit break bar builds up as you take damage. So. Uh, nudge of minus one. Well, until I get something better to put in the equipment slot, uh, nudge isn't bad, because, you know, if I roll a five, then I can just turn it into a four and slot it in the battle axe, and so, yeah, we'll go with that. Stereo head. Weak to shock. I don't think I have any, no, I don't have any equipment to shock damage, so that's not of tremendous use to me. So, we'll re-roll this one initially. That's a six. That's a three. Well, that's going in there, obviously. That's the best we can do with that one. And he's using a weak in there, which weakens one of my equipment for a turn. So the sword now does a maximum of three damage. Of that. But that's not too bad. So I'm going to reroll these first of all. Reroll the worst ones. Ugh. A horrible roll set of rolls this turn, but well, we'll do six damage to him, so. Decent roll, we can still kill him next turn. Uh, he can only put a maximum of four in there, but that's a pretty good roll for him, because he's got two of those off. So he's weakened both my battle axe and my nudge to make them pretty awful. But, on the other hand, if I activate Fury and then drop that in there, Yes, we kill him. And that levels up to level 3, which means we get some more hit points. And uh, we get a choice of a new equipment. So we have a spike shield, which we can put a maximum of a 5 in. Uh, on even, it does that much damage. On odd, it gives us that many shields, which is essentially extra hit points. Or we can have boomerang, which does twice the damage we put into it, but it does the same amount of damage back to us. But that also takes up two slots, I think. That only takes up a one. Uh, I'm going to take the boomerang. Because the boomerang's a pretty good, you know, heavy hit. Even if we take a bit of damage ourselves. But, if, you know, if it, if it finishes the fight in one shot. Let's do some rerolling. So, yeah, we will uh, reduce that one down. Eight damage to him there. Five damage to him there. Now this will do six damage to us, but it'll do twelve damage to him. So you see he's nearly dead now. And obviously that damage to us does charge our fury meter as well. And we can heal at the end of the fight anyway, because uh So yeah, um there's no reason to delay, we might as well just kill him. So yep. Down he goes. Okay. 
and we'll go to the cart now. And what have we got here? So we have, I mean, we could afford any of these really. Now, I don't really want the Iron Shield because it strikes me as just frankly a worse shield than the Spike Shield I could have taken earlier anyway. Uh, Snake Eye Charm, roll two ones. That's good if you have other abilities that require a lot of ones to trigger them, for example, like multiple things that just require you to put any dice to do, you know, one poison or something like that. Uh, the taser's not bad. Maxima three damage, but it also shocks the enemy, which um, downgrades one of their equip, uh, basically blanks one of their equipments out so that they can't use it without spending another dice. So yeah, I think we'll have that. We'll go into our equipment slot here. What can we equip? Uh, I think we've got enough stuff at this point that I'm not too worried about using the nudge. So I think we're going to equip the taser instead. I'll we'll have that apple. And then we'll go... You can't go back up a four, so it's always worth taking everything. Ah, now here we've got the most useful things in the game, I think, personally. Uh, these anvils let you upgrade every piece of equipment, which basically gives... Uh, every equipment has a plus version, which is basically the same, but does a bit more damage. Now, we can get to that going through this level 2 dryad here or we can get to it going through this handyman here either way uh, I think we're going to fight the dryad first because we're lower level neither will level us uh, dryad's strong against poison which means you take half damage against poison but we don't have any poison abilities so that's not really a problem so we've got our 4 which is straight in there no brainer and then we'll re-roll these a bit. Uh, so we can tase her. Shocks her. And then I guess... I mean, it won't kill her, and it would damage us. So I think we'll just put that in there and just do a normal damage to her, because I think we're going to kill her anyway next turn, either way, from 9 or from 3. And you see, because that's shocked, she has to waste the dice. We should get to activate that this turn, which is quite important because that would have made a fairly special difference to Ooh. Now this is a tricky one here. Now I don't really want to use the Fury because I think I can kill her anyway, so we'll just re-roll these. Uh, and we'll re-roll that. Uh, we'll put the six in there. Perfect. Could have done that with a three actually, but because uh, it would have been double, so. And so we will go and grab this first. So we can have a heal or some poison. Oh no, we can't have the poison, we can't afford it. Uh, I don't think we really need the heal at the moment, but it's only one gold and it's a useful option to have if we decide we want to change later on, so. Uh, we might as well have one of the apples, which gives us nearly full health. Uh, I'm actually going to do this one first because I want to see what we get out of here because then I've got the choice of what to upgrade more. Okay. Now. Well, putting a four in there, that's, that's a given. Now, if I use Fury and then activate the Boomerang, I would do 24 damage to him. I do 12 to myself, but I will level at the end of this fight, so I'll heal no matter what. And I could, yeah, let's do it. And that's instantly done enough damage to get my Fury back up as well. And we can finish him off with the sword then. So yeah, we took him out in one turn. Perfect. Now he's leveled, we've got an extra dice. This is going well. Uh, chocolate cookie, charge for 12 to repeat your next attack. So it's basically like having an extra lot of my uh, fury. Um, I don't think it's hugely worth it. Boomerang. No, I don't think it's worth it over any of the stuff I've got on at the moment. Maybe over the taser, I guess. Shock's useful, but yeah, no, we'll have that instead of the taser. But, I mean, how often am I likely to not to have the dice left over that I'm not going to have used? I'm rolling four dice a turn. 
Yeah, I am rolling four dice a turn now, so I'm going to at least, you know, dump one of them in there, I guess. So, yeah, let's go to the upgrade options and see what we can do. You can only upgrade the stuff you actually got equipped, so if I upgrade the sword, it'll just do plus one damage. That's kind of garbage, I don't want that. Uh, if I upgrade the battle axe, uh, it makes it half the size, so I can fit another piece of equipment in. That's very tempting. Uh, or chocolate cookie, reduce it to nine. Or the boomerang. Ooh, now that's nice. Because the boomerang then only backfires for three, rather than what the dice value is. I think I like that one. Because, I mean, we want to put high numbers in there, because, you know, ideally we're going to be putting fives and sixes in there, at, you know, most of the time. Uh, but I do like the smaller battle axe as well. I think we're going to take the smaller battle axe. Because then we can go back into equipment and put something else back on. Like we can put the taser back in, or we can put... Maybe the nudge, actually. Maximum of four. Nudge or Taser? No, I think Taser, because then if we roll a low number, then we've got something that's useful for it. Yeah, okay. So then we'll go uh, kill the Handyman. You don't have to fight all the monsters, but you can just go down. But, uh, if you fight everything, there's enough stuff that you will be at maximum level before you fight the final boss. And you can beat the final boss at lower level, but it's generally better to uh, level up. So here, uh, we will... Fury, I think, and then immediately boomerang him for all the damage, which will limit break us again immediately. And I don't think we actually need really to do much else, because yeah, we just drop that in there, and that in there, and down he goes immediately. So yeah, that Fury boomerang is actually a pretty nice combo. Kind of thinking maybe I should have actually gone with the uh, upgraded boomerang. But maybe we'll do that next time we find day, because I say there'll be more than one upgrade option. So let's go down to the next level. Is there an upgrade? You could sometimes get upgrades at chests or uh, stuff like this, so you never know. There might be one here. Uh, level up in 11, so three. So we'll level up after fighting all of these guys. So we'll fight the fireman first, because he's a nice easy one, and then we can get to the heal if we need to. Uh, he's weak to ice, but we don't have any ice spells. Not actually resistant to fire, oddly enough. To, uh, uh, let's start re-rolling some dice. Uh, I think we're going to use the three in there straight up. Uh, those fives are okay as they are. Uh, let's try for a six or a four. We'll drop the four in there. Drop the five in there. And I don't think it's really worth using the fury to take 10 damage back for the sake of doing 20, and it would end the fight instantly, though. Yeah, that is worth it. Because chances are he'll do about 10 damage to us anyway, if I let him have a turn, so... And why not, yeah. And then we can go through here and grab that apple. See if there's anything to buy. Uh, someone will swap our taser... Or a Toxic Ooze. Toxic Ooze is quite nice. Does X damage. Adds to poison if you roll a 6. I will take that. Because that is a flat upgrade over the sword. Because <clears throat> you can still put any dice in it. It'll still do the damage. And if you happen to put a 6 in there, you poison them as well. So, yep. Um... We don't seem to have lost our taser. Maybe we had another taser? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that glitched slightly. Because <clears throat> I think someone offered me something for it. Unless I had two tasers and I didn't realise. But, uh, hey, I'm not complaining. Either way, I've got myself uh, a nice little toxic ooze. I might put that heal on there instead of the taser, you know. Because I think, yeah. Having a little bit of a heal option is always nice. Uh, we will fight Crystalina first. There's no real difference between the two of them. In terms of 
difficulty. I think probably Crystallina is slightly easier because of the way it works, as you'll see in a minute. So we'll drop that in there. Regenerate free health. And nope. So we will do eight damage there. Two damage there. And bam. Five back on us, which also puts us over the uh, fear on the end of turn. I don't think we really got the dice to be using the chocolate cookie. I, mean, I might actually get rid of that for a nudge at the moment. Just happy to sort of out of there. So yeah, she unlocks the crystal weapons as she goes, but she has to use a certain number of dice to use them. So yeah, we'll drop the uh, two to four there. We'll roll that one. We'll roll that two. On, oh, no. something nice. Well, that sucked. Oh, we'll have two health back. Uh, he can take four damage there, and then I think we're going to fury to finish the fight. We're only down to twelve hit points now, so we're playing this a little bit riskily. Whip works like the uh, poison option, but uh, on a six, it does burn. Uh, I normally prefer poison, but I'm going to swap that out for this fight because the haunted jar is resistant to poison, I believe. Yeah, it's going against poison. Uh, we're going to be trying to spam the healing where we can here because we're a bit lower on health than I'd like to be. So, arguably, this is where we don't really want to use the boomerang too much because we're quite low. Uh, we'll drop that straight into there for as much damage as possible. And re-roll this. Try and get a four. That wasn't perfect. Uh, I really don't want to drop it in that because I don't really want to take the damage myself. So we're actually going to use the chocolate chip cookie. Uh, what fire does, he can still use that dice, but if he does use the dice, he takes two damage. And poison, you just take that much damage you turn, then it ticks down by one. So, at the moment, next time I'm going to take two damage. The real trouble with him is if you let him get going, he has an ability that doubles the poison stack, and then it's just, just bad for everyone. Uh, we're going to hit Fury now, and double burn him. Uh, we're going to heal, obviously. Oh no, I should have, uh, I could have done the cookie first and then, uh, so yep, yeah, misplay. Um, actually want a four here. Yep, yeah, that'll do perfectly. We will uh, repeat next attack and then bam, bam. Three poison to us. I don't think he's got quite enough to activate that. Yeah, so next turn that would double the poison stack and that would be very bad for our health. Uh, so we just want to kill him now because uh, it doesn't really matter about the healing now because uh, you know what, I'll do it anyway. Why not? I mean, that would be after normally you want to get as many heals off as you can before you get a level anyway. So level five. Oh, excellent. Equipment upgrade. Uh, we could have a shield grip. These doubles back with shield, but I don't do shield. I'm not really building the shield at the moment, so we're definitely going to take the equipment upgrade. Uh, we could upgrade the whip to on a six burns two dice. That's quite nice. Uh, however, I think... Oh, we could... Now nah, we're going to take the boomerang, reduce the damage, backfire to three. That's going to be amazing. Uh, the burn dice, I'm not actually a big fan of, as I said, compared to poison normally, because poison just adds up over time and builds up a nice little stack. I like having that bit of poison on there. I mean, I could drop the whip for the taser and the nudge. No, it's nice to have there. I, li I like it. So, uh, we'll go down to the next level. This is the last floor before the boss. We've got another upgrade option up there. Uh, so, I think... We're going to fight the snowman first. Ooh. We're going to sort the whip back in because the snowman is weak to fire damage. I think pretty sure 
got any other fires? No, just that one. But yeah, if we do fire damage, it does double damage. And if he touches any of the burn dice, it counts as fire damage as well. So, uh, yeah. So, no point in healing at the moment. So we got our five. So we'll start re-rolling some of these. Uh, we've got the four. That's maximum damage from that, so that's perfect. And then we'll just try and roll this as high as we can. And that sucked. Well, we'll do ten damage. We're only taking three back now, so that's much better. And I could do three damage to him with the whip, but I actually think I would rather just pump some stuff into the chopper cookie and get it uh, ready to go. Uh, he's going to put odd numbers in these, but each one will freeze one of my dice. Each frozen dice will turn my highest roll into a one, so that sucks. But I can re-roll them all. And I got a limit break. So let's start re-rolling these dice. So we get, we've got a six. We've got a two. we got another six. Perfect. So... Well, the two can go on a heal. And then I think I just kill him. I mean, that does that much damage to him. Uh, I don't even need to use the Fury, I don't think, because that will do 12. Yep, and then I kill him with this. Beautiful. So you see, the thing about this game is it's, um, it's more of a strategy game than it is a role-playing game as such, and it's, uh, you know, you're, you're placing the dice strategy. Yeah. I, it's really clever. I love it. So we'll grab that health. This is going to be full. And then we'll upgrade something. And I think... I mean, possibly the heal. Let's just put up to a four in there. Which recovers four up to four health a go. And uh, also reduces poison stacks by one, which can be nice. But I actually think the chocolate co cookie down to, you know, only nine needed to do it. That's the way to go. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that. And then we're going to swap out Toxic Ooze again. And... Where are we going? Level up in 14... Crack us the last level, so we'll find him first. Oh, what he does, he do. Oh yeah, he's a pain. He curses and blinds you. Um, you'll see how that works in a minute. So You can get double fury. Let's try. And then we'll use the boomerang. No, that was just a waste. Damn. But still did a bunch of damage. Uh, let's try and reroll this a bit. Well, that sucked. Um. That one's bad, it gets worse each time you, the longer you leave it, the worse he gets. So yeah, blinded dice, I don't get to see what they are, but if I re-roll them, I can find out. Um, I mean, I can... Okay, so I know that's higher than a three. That was probably a one. Let's re-roll these just to be sure what they are. That's not bad. Uh, we will... Do 16 damage if we do that. 18 damage if we... Yeah, just more. Ooh. 
That's cursed. Cursed is a random chance that one of my equipment will do nothing when I use it. So, uh, yeah, that happened. Yeah, hit him anyway. That was stupid. I should have used... Uh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to kill him next turn regardless of what he does, so it doesn't really matter hugely. Uh, the reroll thing is actually not an ability uh, equipment, so that can't be cursed. Um... Let's try and get a heal off. No curse, no curse, no curse. Yep. I know. But we kicked your ass off. Onwards to glory. Uh, we'll grab this apple, and then we'll beat up the lab. I don't like the lab, though. It's annoying. I can't remember why. I can't remember I don't like it. But we should be fine here, I think. So, yeah. Okay. Then we're going to activate the chocolate chip cookie, and then beat the crap out of him. And we roll that, and try for either a 4 or a 6. Mm, is it worth using Fury on... No. Oh, I he's got dodge. Okay, so dodge is going. And cur Ooh, and weakened as well. So silence means I have to dump two dice to break the silence, otherwise I can't use my ability there, and I can't use my normal ability there. Uh, dodge flat out means the next thing I do, uh, he will dodge until I do nothing. So I need to waste a weak attack. Just use it for dodge. Uh, yeah, I can kill him. If I drop these two in there, break the silence, and then activate fury, and then activate the boomerang, bam, dead. And we hit the chest. Blight is phenomenal if I was doing a primary poison build, but I am not. If you're going like poison, 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 then, you know, you just want that on there to really stack it up, and poison can get really crazy really quickly if you do that, but uh, we're not running that way, so let's go and fight the Banshee. And I think she curses you. I don't know, she can silence you and curse you. And freeze you. Ooh, but she needs sixes for most of those to work. So she's a bit erratic. But uh, we'll heal a bit. Uh, we'll roll this a bit. Uh, I think what we'll do next is double boomerang. Crazy alpha damage in this build. Just gonna freeze two of our dice. Oh, heartbeat means we are low on health. But I think we can kill her this turn. So if we fury. That'll do 20 damage. For quite a bit of damage back, but that's enough. And we're going to level, so it's fine. Boom, level six. And an extra dice. Love it. Let's go in here and see what we get. Uh, we could have another Toxic Ooze, another heal, or uh, we could have an equipment upgrade. Let me think about that for a minute. Add one, please. Toxic Ooze adds three poison if you roll a six. Or Healing Crystal does four. I think we'll just take the, uh, do a bit more poison damage. Not really going to matter much. And then we go face the boss. And it is... Aofi or Aif? Waf? I don't know how you pronounce that. Too many vowels. I'm going to fight for it. It's probably something in Norse that I don't actually uh, understand and I'm mispronouncing horribly. So, Aoife. That's what we're calling. 
And that's a pretty good roll to start with. So... I think we are going to chocolate chip cookie straight off the bat. Um, poison the hell out of her, because that's an extra six damage effectively. It's going to stay... And I think she can do shields and stuff. Yeah, she does. And poison bypasses shields. Uh, we will hit her for that. Which will do three damage back to us, but conveniently... I don't know, do we hit? we heal the three? I'm going to see if I can get a four. Oh well, that was a waste. I'll have one back. Oh, seems to be bleeding. A scratch on my forehead. It's... Ow. Cut myself in. Okay. Now, she is bad because I'm pretty sure she adds an arse ton of shield. And then she just bludgeons you to death with it. Yeah. So. We are going to Fury, and we can continue poisoning the hell out of her because poison bypasses her shields entirely. Uh, so we just have to stay alive, and she'll die from that anyway now. Uh, that poison will kill her at the moment in three turns. Um, let's re roll this two. Uh, roll that three. Roll that two again. And. Yeah. We will boomerang her to 20 damage. And then we will hit her for an extra 6 damage. Which means she will now immediately die to the poison. Bam! Dead. We win. And we have completed the game. So yeah. That is Dicey Dungeons, in a nutshell. And uh, play again. You can choose one of the other character classes. Editor, I haven't really looked at because apparently it spoils things. And if we go back in, you know, there's other episodes for the Warrior you can play, which is basically just modifiers. At the moment, because the game's in development, there's only two other ones, and there's always Hardcore mode as well. Hardcore mode, enemies get more health, and the, all their equipment is the upgraded versions. Uh, or you could do the other two versions where you start with certain modifiers... Um, but yeah, I think you get the general idea. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And as I say, I'll pop a link in the description if you're interested in trying it out yourself. It's pretty cheap. Like, you know, three or four pounds, I think it was something like that. And you do get, obviously, access to all the updated versions as they develop it further. And you'll get a Steam key when it comes on Steam. But uh, yeah, have a look for yourself, see what you think. You think. Uh, simple little game, but very clever and a lot of fun. So uh, I will hopefully see you guys next time. And, obviously, do <coughs> like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next video. Cheers!